Okay, so um, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and kick off. Um, and uh, as, you, as I mentioned yesterday at the end of the day, these are going to be, for the most part except for the keynote, very short, quick, uh, punchy presentations to give you a taste of the kinds of uh, expertise and projects and uh, really real vision and leadership um, that we already have as part of the museums and the web community. Um, I'll start by asking Rob Stein, um, who is Deputy Director of the Dallas Museum of Art, to come up and, and take the stage. And of course, you can read everyone's full bios in the program. Thank you, Nancy. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, I wanted to come and talk to you a little bit today about a project that we've uh, just rolled out at uh, my museum at the Dallas Museum of Art in Dallas, Texas. And uh, really it began in thinking um, more deeply about this question of why do museums matter? Uh, that's a, a, a subject that's been bubbling around in my head and one that um, Stephen Weil, uh, a noted thinker in museums, wrote a, a text called Making Museums Matter. And he asked this question, uh, why is your community better off because it has a museum? And he says that it, it must be more than just simply because your museum exists, but rather that museums only matter to the extent they're perceived to provide their communities something of value beyond their own mere existence. So we've been thinking about this quite a bit in Dallas. Uh, it's a new museum for me, one that I started about nine, uh, I started working in about nine months ago. Um, and I thought it would be useful to tell you a little bit about uh, our museum. This is a, a picture of the Dallas Museum of Art in the foreground here. Uh, it is uh, situated in Dallas, in the downtown, right next to the, the business districts. Um, the Dallas Museum of Art was founded in uh, 1903 and has a fairly comprehensive collection that spans uh, many, uh, many areas uh, and regions of the world over about 5,000 years of world history. Uh, we are located in the Arts District in Dallas, Texas, uh, along with performing arts venues and, and several other museums. Uh, our Arts District is the largest uh, contiguous uh, arts district in North America. Dallas is the fourth largest metropolitan uh, area in North America after New York, LA, and Chicago. Uh, so it's a very vibrant uh, community and there are lots of different uh, aspects and sides to that community and we're really thinking about the ways in which we can do a good job of providing value to them. So here's the problem. While uh, over 2,000 people a day move to Dallas, uh, attendance at the Dallas Museum of Art has hovered around 500,000 people for mostly the last decade. There have been some years with, uh, which were a little higher and some years which were a little lower, but for the most part, that attendance has stayed static. So with 500,000 visitors and a population of 6.5 million people, uh, there's no way that we're reaching any more than 7% of our community. And so this makes me ask the question, <laughs> are we really failing at our job of making the museum matter? Um, how, how can we say we're really being all that successful when it, we're in reality only reaching a very small portion of our local community? Museums as a whole are really seen as trusted uh, organizations. Uh, there's a study by Indiana University that shows that museums were rated as more trustworthy than information from books, uh, information from teachers, or even personal ac accounts from your grandparents. <laughs> so museums obviously hold a really important place in our society, but I would say that are we struggling, are we trusted, but not yet vital? Uh, there was a, a census taken in the United States in 2010 that showed only 14.5% of US adults visited museums in the prior 12 months. So I would say that 14% of the adult population in the United States is not a vital contribution. Uh, and for Dallas, we're even half of that number. So we're less than 7%. So I think we have a long way to go. Uh, but this is not a problem that's unique to Dallas. Uh, studies at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and other places show that 
visitors to art museums spend uh, generally less than 30 seconds with each work of art. And it's very rare for a visitor to an art museum who spends more than one minute with a work of art. So we have many masterpieces in our collection, but our guests are spending less than 30 seconds with them. Uh, this phenomenon was described by Douglas Wurtz as grazing. So you might picture our audience as cattle uh, in the gallery <laughs> who are just picking and choosing small samples but never really engaging deeply. So as we arrived uh, in Dallas, we were really thinking about what are the ways in which we can change that uh, and how might we make it better. Um, Dallas, like many metropolitan areas, has some communities that are very rich uh, and some communities that are very poor. Uh, and we find uh, that on the days in which we open the museum for free, we have a very diverse audience, uh, both culturally diverse, uh, diverse in age, and diverse uh, in economy. So we're, we're making some moves. We announced last week that we are removing the admission charge from the Dallas Museum of Art to make it free every day. And we're also encouraging uh, any visitor who wants to join us to participate as a member for free as well. And what we realized is that on those days when we do welcome guests, the very first question that is asked to them when they walk in the door is, are you a member? Which to someone who's not used to coming to a museum uh, can seem a little threatening. It's like, do you belong to this club? Uh, and of course, many times the answer is no. We don't belong to the club. We want to make sure that everyone feels as though they're welcome to belong. And so we want to remove any barrier to that. So part of what we've done is think about designing a flip uh, where membership in US museums is mostly about a financial transaction. We'd rather uh, anyone who would like to be a member uh, to be allowed to do so. And that participation is really the key uh, that we're looking for in their membership. We believe that the larger the community we can build who is actively engaged in participation, uh, the better for the museum. Uh, Henry Jenkins is a noted writer about participatory culture and the ways in which the technical uh, emergence of social media has really uh, changed the participation that audiences can have. And he notes that a participatory culture is one in which members of the culture believe that their contributions matter and they feel a degree of social connection with each other. So we've designed a program that we call DMA Friends, which would be this free membership program, which is designed to promote the participation and engagement with the museum and the art that we collect. The way that this will work is that we will be giving membership cards, much like we do already, but those cards will either be printed out uh, or uh, they will be available on your phone or there will be iPads in the main concourse of the museum where you could log in and check in. The idea being that you can tell us uh, when you're at the museum and uh, you're going to stop in and say hello and that we're focused on building a longer term relationship to you as an individual, not as a demographic. Uh, and that uh, what we're seeking after is uh, those individuals coming back many times over the year and that when they do, we want to know the ways in which they're engaging and how we can deepen that engagement with us. So this, uh, this required us to build uh, a system for which we can track that engagement. And we're working with a, a company in the United States called Learning Times, which has an online uh, learning system called Badge Stack, where badges are created that are fun, they're interesting, but from the museum's perspective, they're simply a bundle of activities for people to do inside of the museum. This is a great way for us to provide new ideas to visitors who aren't familiar with visiting an art museum, uh, and also to magnify the existing behaviors in the museum that we think are good. So it's a lens that we can use to highlight positive engagement inside the museum. Our education and membership development staff, visitor services staff are all working together to change the very organization of the museum. And we're brainstorming ways in which we could give credit or recognition uh, for the first, this is a picture of badges that we're offering. One is the rhythm badge. So we offer musical programs, and if you attend those, uh, you sh we should recognize that and give you credit. 
but then we want to take those folks who may be very interested in jazz and connect them to works of art about the Harlem Renaissance or works of art at different periods in time that may relate to jazz. So it's a lever for us. A badge is simply a lever that can nudge gently in the direction of more uh, positive engagement and provide new ideas, new ways of using the museums other than simply grazing through the middle of the gallery. Well, this isn't some other images. Um, we are also providing incentives. So in typical membership, you pay us 50 or $100 and you get some benefits. So if we're saying that participation is the currency, then as you participate, you should be able to earn some rewards. Uh, so we're allowing visitors, guests, to choose from among several different kinds of rewards that they would earn based on the degree to which they participate with us. So if you're incredibly connected and a very good friend to the DMA, then you would have more and more rewards available to you. These may be as simple as free parking or free tickets to a, an exhibition. They may be um, boutique or rare or special so that you could have lunch with our conservator and learn how to preserve paintings in our collection. Uh, you, we could help you visit. We could take you on a private tour inside our storage or allow you to work with an artist installing a commissioned work of art. Those are all experiences that don't cost us anything, but they're very, very special for us to be able to offer it um, to, to friends. The real key as a museum practitioner um, is that for the very first time, we'll have a detailed stream of data that tells us not only when someone shows up at the front door, but what do they do once they're inside of the museum and which aspects of our program and our offering are really being effective uh, in promoting engagement. That is critical for us to then change our behavior uh, and optimize the engagement and offer. So. Designing this system gives us the, the dials and the levers to, to mess with, to try and achieve a result of more positive engagement. We're not only doing this inside of the museum, but we're also looking about how we could promote this engagement from outside of the museum as well. So we're designing software that listens uh, across the range of social media outlets. So uh, this is a, a screenshot of a tool that we're using to listen to over 100 channels of comment online. And what we're doing is that staff inside of the museum are reading and reviewing each and every one of those. I think it's, if we're asking people to engage with us, then we ought to actually be engaging. Uh, and so uh, when somebody makes a comment about us on any channel online, we'll be able to know that it happened, respond to it accurately, and give credit for, for being engaged and saying something meaningful. Uh, as people begin to do that, that actually really does increase the value of our museum. And so we'll be uh, giving credit for uh, tweets on, on Twitter or posts of your visit to the museum on Flickr, uh, uh, comments to your friends on Facebook. Uh, we'll be able to know that these are happening and then loop them into this friends program. So really we're trying to take a new and different stab about the ways in which museums can really matter. And I don't, I'm not certain that we're getting it all right, but the idea is that we could build a tool, a measurement, to tell us whether we're on the right track or not. And we're really dedicated uh, to changing our practice until we get it right. Uh, I think we've had some great outpouring. This is an article in The Guardian, uh, a London newspaper, uh, the day after our announcement. And Jason Farrago says, when you can slip into a gallery for just 15 minutes to see a favorite painting, or when parents can take their children without having to budget for it, the museum takes on a societal function. It's no longer just a fortress or an amusement, it's a civic platform where education and citizenship go hand in hand. For Dallas, a museum membership should be like a library card. Everyone should have one and it should foster an engagement with the museum that goes beyond the occasional visit to a kind of civic pride. And he says, I hope it works <laughs> because in a perpetually privatizing world, the kind of civic culture that the Dallas Museum of Art is trying to foster has become rarer than any antiquity. So thank you very much.